Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Find Your Model Health, the official podcast for those looking to optimize their long term health and weight goals and understand how their body really works. I am your host, I am Shemaine Linney. I am a fitness and nutrition expert, certified iridologist, and biohacker. I am very happy to have you back with me for another part of your day. And I really hope that you find this information or this week's episode very helpful. As many of you know, I'm just back from a three week vacation in Europe, and part of that was spent in Ireland with my family. So my accent might be a little bit stronger in this episode, but should subside over the next few days, maybe. Um, I can't hear it, of course, but other people say it. So um, in this episode, my passion really is, and if you go back to the very beginning of all my podcasts, uh, and they started in 2016, my passion really is helping people understand their body. I'm a firm believer that if people can understand how their body works, how different things influence their body, uh, different foods, how poor sleep influences your body, how exercise influences your body, how individual foods and food timing influences your body, how your body reacts to situations. Like I'm a big believer that if people understand why and how things work, it really helps them not not master their health, but really gives them some sort of control and some information that they can implement and at least have them step away and go, oh, okay, I didn't know that, but I know that now, like that's amazing and really help them, I suppose, connect more with their body. So in this week's episode, I want to look at Hormones, like really help you understand the basics of hormones. It always blows my mind how much people don't know about their body, but especially hormones. Sometimes I think people just throw around the word hormones and they they don't actually know what it means. So we're going to get into that. But before we go on, I must remind you that the information in these podcast episodes is for informational purposes only and should not be taken as medical advice, please consult your health practitioner before making any lifestyle changes. Okay, so we're going like right basic. What are hormones? Hormones are chemical messengers that send signals to different parts of your body to tell them what to do and when to do it. That's basic. Like, that is the most basic thing. They're signaling factors. They're signaling messengers. Um... They're chemicals that are made up of protein and fats. Many people know that you need fat to make hormones. So you need cholesterol, which is your fat, to make your hormones. You also need protein to make hormones. Hormones are very much made up of proteins. Then we have glands in your body that make and release the hormones and these make up what's called your endocrine system. So these chemical messengers, these hormones, they're transported through your body, through your blood, which then brings them to your organs, your skin, your muscles and whatever other tissues need them. And these signals tell your body, like I said, what to do and when to do it. So hormones are essential for life and your health. If your hormones, I'm sure everyone knows, if your hormones are not in a good place, if they're not balanced, you are going to feel rubbish. I think yesterday in a post, because this is the topic I'm focusing on for the next while on my Instagram and Facebook page and with my clients, is hormones. I feel right now um, this is going to be beneficial for most people based on the questions that I get. Yesterday, I think I said there's over 60 hormones in the human body. I was wrong. There's um, over 70, 
almost 80 hormones from some of the research I have looked at in the body. That's a lot when you look at how the general population looks or considers hormones. They think, okay, my sex hormones, so uh, estrogen, testosterone, progesterone, most people don't consider DHEA. Um, cortisol, my stress hormone, insulin for blood sugars, a lot of people honestly don't consider adrenaline, and then they might consider um, serotonin and dopamine and melatonin. Vitamin D, but some people still don't know that vitamin D is a hormone. So you see, like, that list is quite small. There's actually a lot more, and they're all very intricately entwined, and they all interact with each other, and there's a ripple effect that happens. So hormones and most of the tissues or these glands that create and secrete the hormones, they make up your endocrine system. We're going to look at the different organs there. But these basically signal to different bodily processes. So hormones involved in metabolism, most people know thyroid function, which is directly to metabolism. Hormones um, influence sleep, your hunger, satiety cycles, your growth and development, obviously libido, your menstrual cycle, reproduction or fertility. Um, your mood, anxiety, depression, whether you feel elated, whether you feel manic. Hormones play a part in all of this. Hormones play a part in your cravings. Hormones play a part in your immune system, your skin health, your hair, your nails. Like hormones, very important, but it's important that we understand them. And the thing with hormones is a little bit goes a long way. So if you have even minor changes in the levels of your hormones or specific hormones, for example, most people will think about changes in thyroid levels, you're going to feel that. And that can potentially lead to conditions that require you to seek some medical help. So hormones, we all know, are very important, but hopefully this helps you understand a bit more. So what do hormones do? Well, they, they pretty much interact with everything. If your hormones are off, you're going to feel rubbish. You're not going to feel yourself. You're going to be fatigued. You're going to feel flustered, which is a word I use a lot. You're going to feel um, just not in control of your body. Just what well, I've no energy. I'm fatigued. I'm irritable. I'm not sleeping right. My cravings are through the roof. I'm gaining body fat, my hair is falling out, I can't focus, I can't remember stuff, uh, my libido is gone, my menstrual cycle or menses is haywire, I'm getting it every two weeks. So hormones do a lot of this. But the thing with hormones is that a hormone will only act on a part of your body if it fits the receptors on that tissue or on that cell that it's needed. So think of a hormone as a key and the cells of whatever the tissue is, whatever the organ is, like your thyroid, um, if the key fits, if the hormone fits that specific organ, so thyroid hormone fits the thyroid gland, then it's gonna fit in perfectly and it'll work. It'll tell the thyroid what to do. So the hormone will then deliver a specific message that causes that target site or that organ like the thyroid gland to take specific action like let's upregulate production of T3 or whatever it might be. So your body uses hormones for communication. There's two specific types of communication. The first type is communication between two endocrine glands. So one gland releases the hormone, which stimulates then another gland to change the levels of hormone that it's releasing. So an example of that would be back to the thyroid again. So that's communication between your pituitary gland and thyroid. So your pituitary gland releases TSH, which is thyroid stimulating hormone. I'm just going to take a pause here for a minute. A lot of people think that TSH is a thyroid hormone. 
It is not. It's a pituitary gland hormone. Testing TSH is not an indicator that you have a thyroid problem. It needs to be looked at in a broader picture. So back to this. Your pituitary gland releases thyroid stimulating hormone, which triggers your thyroid gland to release its own hormones, which then have an effect throughout your body with metabolism and growth and all that good stuff. Then the second type of communication is between an endocrine gland and a targeted organ. So an example of this would be when your pancreas releases insulin. When you take in some sugar, your pancreas releases insulin, which then acts on your muscles and your liver and your brain to take up and metabolize that sugar or glucose. So on to the endocrine, gland, endocrine system. What are the organs or the glands involved in the endocrine system? So we have the pituitary gland, like I mentioned. You got your hypothalamus, hypothalamus, tal, tal, thalamus. That's my accent coming in. You got your pineal gland, you've got your thyroid, you've got your parathyroid glands, you've got your adrenals, you've got your pancreas, you've got your ovaries, and then you've got your testes. So some of them are going to sound familiar to you, but there's more. Not all organs and tissues that release hormones or hormone-like substances are considered part of the endocrine system, but they still do release hormones. So other body tissues or parts that release hormones are your kidneys, your liver, your gut, or I would I would have first said stomach, but just to kind of be inclusive, your gut, the placenta, and then fat tissue or adipose tissue. This is something I've spoken about a lot. Fat cells are not just fat cells. They are pretty much endocrine organs in themselves. Not necessarily classified as endocrine organs, but they are, they act like it. Fat cells contain and release hormones. Fat cells also contain a lot of inflammatory other molecules and toxins. Um, so a fat cell is not just a fat cell. It's not just a storage site for fat. It actually is a storage site for a lot of, shall we say, unwanted molecules, stuff we don't want in our body. So um, I think when we look at and this is a very controversial topic, but I do feel like I have some kind of stage to say this on because many of you know I have fought with obesity pretty much all my life so far. I lost 165 pounds. I spoke recently on my YouTube channel about my struggles while on vacation with my body and how I see myself and body dysmorphia. And I get the whole thing of love your body, love how you look nowadays. I get it. Of course you should love your body. But part of loving your body is maintaining a good body weight and keeping yourself healthy. This whole plus size model promotion and all, all of this. And I, again, I know this is very controversial. But I have to say I don't agree with this. And I've spoken about this before. I don't agree with it. I don't agree with promoting people to be overweight, promoting young girls to gain weight and that it's okay, love yourself otherwise, regardless. Yes, of course, love yourself. You're supposed to love yourself as a human being. But you need to understand, fat cells, it's not just body fat. It's not just your appearance. There's a whole chemical and biological reaction that happens with fat cells. So it's definitely something to consider. I don't want to get into this too much more. I want to move on. Let's look a bit at these different um, endocrine specific organs. So the pituitary gland, like I already mentioned, 
um, directly influences your thyroid. So your pituitary gland is a pea-sized gland at the base of your brain, behind the bridge of your nose and directly below your hypothalamus, which we'll look at next. It consists of two lobes, the posterior lobe and the anterior lobe. And your pituitary gland then releases several hormones, the TSH, like I mentioned, also FSH, which is your follicle stimulating hormone, which stimulates then the ovaries to release an egg. Um, it, it releases prolactin, luteinizing hormone, growth hormone, so a pretty important gland. Um, then we have the hypothalamus. Your hypothalamus, that is a small region of your brain that connects to your pituitary gland through the pituitary stalk. It releases several hormones in itself that help control your pituitary gland. So your hypothalamus makes some familiar hormones like dopamine and oxytocin as well. The hypothalamus actually makes oxytocin, but your pituitary gland stores and releases it. The body is so interesting and amazing. Um, we also have growth hormone, releasing hormone, which sounds pretty confusing, but the, the, it's important that you understand this stuff. We're going to stick up here with the brain, and we're looking at the pineal gland. Your pineal gland is a tiny gland in your brain that's located beneath the back part of your corpus callosum which are the nerve fibers that connect the two sides or two parts of your brain. And it releases the hormone melatonin. Melatonin, of course, helps us with our sleep quality and our sleep-wake cycle. And melatonin is a strong antioxidant as well and has been used to help with cancer and other diseases. So that's your pineal gland. Moving down, we have your thyroid gland. Many people know your thyroid gland is a butterfly-shaped gland or a tie. It looks like a tie-shaped gland located at the front of your neck, under your skin, just below what we would call our Adam's apple. And then your main, the thyroid's main job is to help with metabolism. So metabolism, of course, is how you utilize energy and how well your body runs, I would say. So thyroid hormone, of course, releases your T4, gets converted into T3, calcitonin, and then the dreaded reverse T3. Um, then we move down a little bit more, and we've got the parathyroid hormones, or parathyroid glands. So most people have four pea-sized parathyroid glands located behind their thyroid glands. Sometimes your parathyroid glands are located along your esophagus or in your chest. When this happens, these are known as ectopic, so pretty much in the wrong place. They shouldn't be there. But a majority of the time, these four pea-sized glands are directly behind your thyroid gland. And the job of these glands is to release parathyroid hormone which is responsible for the calcium balance in your blood and your bones and throughout the body. Okay, next we have our adrenals, our adrenal glands, which help us basically manage stress and be resilient or not. Basically function. The adrenal glands help most of us function. Um, they're also known as, most people don't know this, your suprarenal glands. So they're small triangle shaped glands that are located on the top of your kidneys. Each kidney has one. And they make, as we know, cortisone, aldosterone, DHEA and other androgens, um, adrenaline, and then noradrenaline or epinephrine, norepinephrine. The, the one thing I'll just throw in here, what we see very regularly, is if the thyroid struggles, the adrenals struggle. If the adrenals are struggling, the thyroid will struggle. These two are almost sisters. They're directly intertwined. Next, we have the pancreas. Your pancreas is an organ at the back of your 
abdomen or your belly. It's part of your digestive system, which most people don't think of. When we think of digestion, we think stomach, duodenum, intestines, colon, well, mouth, stomach, and so on. So the uh, pancreas actually is a part of your digestive system, as is the gallbladder. So this little kind of um, pa package of endocrine cells that makes up your pancreas, these cells, they make insulin and glucagon, which are both opposing hormones. Insulin helps us store sugar, glucagon helps us burn sugar. Next, we have our ovaries. So women have ovaries, two ovaries, each located on both sides of their uterus, below the opening of the fallopian tubes. Um, so in addition to containing the eggs that we need to fertilize to grow a baby, um, ovaries also produce estrogen, progesterone, and testosterone. Another little fun fact, testosterone is the highest amount sex hormone in the female body. Even though most of us think it's estrogen, it's actually testosterone. And then next we have the testes or the testicles. So men have two testes that hang in a pouch outside of their body below their penis. And then the testes are part of the male reproductive system and they produce sperm and testosterone. Now I know some of this, you're like, well, yeah, I knew all this already. Even if you knew some of this already, chances are you didn't know all of this and you're going to learn a lot. I want to just move on to um, just the, the other tissues that I said produce some hormones. So I mentioned fat tissue. Fat tissue um, makes its own estrogen and releases its own estrogen. And it's not the good estrogen. It's the to toxic type of estrogen. Uh, this is why people who carry excess weight generally have some sort of estrogen issues. Uh, fat tissues also release leptin. I've spoke about this on recent master classes that I've done, um, the six hormones for fat loss, body weights or body fat set point. These are on my YouTube channel. I spoke about the importance of leptin, especially for fat loss and long-term fat loss. Then we have adiponectin. Adiponectin is very important for optimizing fat loss and fat burning. Um, and then moving on to the kidneys, your kidneys, your adrenals sit on top of your kidneys. Your kidneys are two bean shaped organs and they filter your blood. And I was saying to a client earlier, your kidneys filter every ounce of your blood every hour of the day. So it, the, the body, as much as we know, it's one. It's very intricately entwined. If your blood is somewhat toxic and carrying extra toxins, they're going to go through your kidneys as well. Um, your kidneys are part of your urinary system, but they also produce hormones like renin um, and then the active form of vitamin D as well, which is a hormone. Okay, and then the liver releases insulin-like growth factor, angiotensinogen. Um, so your liver, as most of us know, is an essential organ directly connected to your pancreas and your gallbladder. It performs hundreds of functions necessary to sustain life. Like liver is important. Everything is important, but your liver is pretty important. Um, and it is considered part of your digestive system. So then the gut, your gut releases ghrelin. The gut also does release a little bit of leptin. Um, and then the gut also releases somatostatin and GLP-1, which is glucagon-like peptide. Um, and then the placenta. The placenta, of course, many of us know, connects the body to the uterus during pregnancy, feeds the baby, but also the placenta produces hormones, estrogen and progesterone to help maintain the pregnancy. So there's a lot going on in the body. It's not just those couple of hormones that I mentioned in the beginning. There really is a lot going on in the body. Now, if your hormones go out of balance, 
you're going to struggle. Like I said, you're going to feel rubbish. You're probably going to have thyroid issues. You're probably going to have blood sugar or potential diabetes issues. You're going to have irreg irregular periods or menstrual cycles. You might have PCOS. You might have amenorrhea where you're not getting um, a period. You might have anovulation where you're not ovulating at all. You might be overweight. You might have um, some sort of uncontrollable mood disorder where you're relying on medication. Hormones, really important. What causes hormone imbalances? There's a lot of things. On a basic level, I mean, there could be genetics. There's obviously nutrition and lifestyle, which are the biggest influences on our hormones. But there's mitochondrial function. Your mitochondria, which are the energy powerhouses within your cells, and you have thousands, millions of mitochondria, they directly talk to your hormones, and your hormones directly talk to them. They cross talk. If you were to ask me which came first, the chicken or the egg, I would say it's the mitochondria. Once the mitochondria stop working properly, you get this dysfunction, they start going haywire, they start getting damaged. Then you generally see the rest of the body systems and organs and hormones go haywire too. So this is part of what I do with people. I go right back to the beginning and I go right back to optimizing that metabolic flexibility and the mitochondrial health. Because I know then if I can get the mitochondria working properly, if I can get the metabolic flexibility working properly, it literally will have a ripple effect through the rest of the body. And then we start to see all the other stuff improve. And this is a lot easier for people to do and see results with rather than trying to go in and nitpick at individual stuff. I mean, that can come later if you still don't see progress, but I rather kind of go for these kind of, um, the lower hanging fruit first, the stuff that I have seen and I know is going to make the biggest impact. So my recommendation would be to look at the mitochondria. If you're feeling fatigued, if you're really struggling with your mood, if you can't lose weight, all that, let's step right back. How can we get the mitochondria working properly so that they're creating energy and they are signaling to the hormones as well? So, and there's lots of stuff you can do. I'm not saying this is the only influence. Damage and in injury to specific glands can cause hormone imbalances. Autoimmune conditions like um, stuff running in the family, like um, Hashimoto's, grave disease, um, Sjogren's. There's, you can have interference from external factors, specific medications, maybe vaccines these can influence the hormones and potentially cause imbalances. So um, they're, they're in this day and age, yes, you can go see an endocrinologist to help you. But in this day and age, so many health professionals, naturopaths, nutritional therapists, integrative health practitioners, functional medicine doctors, even just health coaches, personal trainers. So many people have become so well versed in understanding their hormones, like health professionals in understanding hormones and how to help their clients and their students. There's a lot of options for you. So obviously a podcast like this is going to be your starting point to help you understand the basics. And then if you need to start taking action, put the pieces of the puzzle together, that's where you reach out to a health professional for support. There's lots of us out there. Um, so you're not refined to just relying on maybe your family doctor who you maybe can't get in to see or maybe hoping to get an appointment with a specialist. There is a lot. To, you'd be surprised how smart a lot of health professionals now are. It blows my mind when I listen to some of their health professionals talk. So I'm going to leave it at that. Hope that was really informative and really helpful. 
I know it was a lot of information, so you might need to go back, listen to it again, maybe slow down the speed a notch, and just really absorb, wow, this is my body, this is what's happening, and it's amazing. So, if, as always, if you've any questions or feedback, please reach out to me. You can find me at ShemainesModelHealth.com. There's a contact me button on my website. You'll find me on Instagram and Facebook, Shemaine's Model Help. Um, you can even leave a comment under wherever you listen to these podcasts, although I may miss it, so you might be best reaching out to me through one of the other options. Please share with anyone you think may benefit from this information, which is probably a lot of people. Also, please like and subscribe if you haven't done already. And if you feel it's deserved, I would really appreciate you leaving me a review. Uh, it really, really helps with the algorithm and it helps this information reach more people. Otherwise, thank you for joining me. I will speak to you guys really, really soon. Bye-bye. Thank you.